Assalamu alaikum YouTube, this is Imran here, the FOT Foundation. This is a video response to Dr. Nabil Qureshi from Act 17 Apologetics, who's posted a video regarding Surah 86 verses 6 to 7. Um, so I'm going to start off by reading the verses that we're talking about and giving you a translation. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim fal yandhuril insanu mimma khulik خلك مما عندك يخرج من بين سلب والطرائب. So I read from verse five actually down to verse seven there. So let me just give you the translation here that I have in my hand, um, and it goes as follows. So let man observe from what he was created. He was created from a fluid ejected, emerging from between a sulb and a طرائب. Now I deliberately haven't translated a sulb and a taraib because this is essentially the matter at hand. What I'm going to do now is post the translations that Dr. Qureshi prefers to use. So Dr. Qureshi puts forward uh, a summary of his arguments and essentially what he's saying is that um, this, these verses refer to sperm production from being from between the, the back of bone of a man and the ribs of a man, and he said this is scientifically inaccurate. He also then says that in any, any attempt to try and find alternative meanings for the Arabic words is textual acrobatics. And then he goes on to say that any exegesis of the Quran, any trying to interpret the meaning or understand the verses in a greater depth, is dishonest. And actually you should allow the the translations to speak for itself. He then goes on to read an email from somebody who actually tries to explain a little bit of detail behind the verse and explains that a sulb can refer to a man and a taraib can refer to a woman particularly and specifically. And so this then would be a, a meeting of, flu of fluid from a man and fluid from a woman that go on to create the human being. And his response to this actually is very disappointing. What he essentially does is to say, this is not what the Quran is saying. And then he re-refers back to the translations that he prefers to use, um, saying that he trusts these translations. So Dr. Qureshi's arguments actually display a number of flaws, but the primary flaw, which actually is a theme throughout his this presentation, I'll try and highlight. And essentially is that he treats Arabic like it is a dead language. And I'll explain further. The Bible, for example, is written in languages originally that were ancient Greek or ancient Hebrew which are essentially lost languages or, or dead languages. There are only a handful of scholars around the world who can explain the word, words within the language and therefore uh, tend to be the translators. Now Arabic is actually very different to that. It's actually a living language and what I mean by that is there are hundreds of millions of people around the world who speak, read and write the language of the Quran. Now what this does actually gives you a huge access to etymology that you probably wouldn't get to the same degree in other languages. Now, Arabic is a Semitic language and it has a, a root-based system, so every word is formed of essentially three roots. There are exceptions, but on the whole every word is formed of essentially three roots, and from those roots other related meaning words can be derived. So this is not turning the word night into day or the word black into white, but what this is is to take known related and accepted meanings for an Arabic word and using them to, in your translations to provide a meaning that's closer to the context and also closer to the knowledge that one has at the time. Um, and this is actually not textual acrobatics because the Arabic word within the Quran has not changed. It's just that the meaning of the word which is available and known and accepted is being applied to fit with the context and fit with knowledge. Um, one of the ways actually to demonstrate this actually is to provide other translations that are already available that Dr. Qureshi has avoided because they don't support the argument that he puts forward. So what I'm going to do is put these translations uh, forward for you to see. Um, I'll give four translations from non-Muslims, uh, one of whom is a Christian a reverend and the rest will be from Muslims and we'll take it from there.
So it becomes blatantly obvious, actually, that um, Dr. Koresh's reliance upon the clear and obvious translations of Shaka and Yusuf Ali uh, is a little bit disingenuous when we have all of these other translations that are already available which don't support his argument. In fact, Asul Bahir is translated unanimously by all of these translators, including the four non-Muslims, as loins. And uh, interestingly, actually, the Muhammad Assad translation, which is the last one that I posted, um, separates the, the verse 7 into at-sulb as being masculine and at as being feminine and even more interestingly actually translate at as being the pelvic arch of the woman um, now the fact that these other translations are available and they don't support the argument that Dr. Qureshi puts forward is sufficient to, to put, put his reliance upon Shakir and Yusuf Ali translation as being disingenuous as I mentioned but actually I want to build the case a little bit further what I would like to show is that the translations that uh, I have cited and, and the meanings put forward by some of these other translations are valid, known and accepted meanings for the words that are in the Quran. So here we have the Hansware Dictionary of Modern Written Arabic. Um, this is the third edition from 1976. So this is page 521 and we have the root that we're looking for, the Sod Lamba, Saluba. The exact phrase that we're looking for is Sulb and here we have the the same root as I mentioned but actually in the form of sulb there and the meanings are there hard firm solid stiff rigid which are all euphemisms for the male member anyway but let's go further steel also a related meaning spinal column and backbone which is the translations that Dr Qureshi prefers to use and here we have loins so loins is a valid known and accepted meaning for the word a sulb so this is page 92 of the hands where dictionary of modern written Arabic. Let's just go down to find Taraib. And here we have the exact form of the word there. And in this dictionary it says Taraib, chest and thorax are the two meanings given here. And here we have Dr. Edward Lane's lexicon. Uh, Dr. Edward Lane died in 1867 and this is the basically the eight part or the eight volume work that he produced. A very in-depth look into meanings of words in the Arabic language. Uh, let's see what we can find here. So here we are on page 1711 of uh, Lane's lexicon and this is the route that we're looking for. It starts off actually down here so let's go there and just generally talking about it it says that this is said of a thing and of a man so we have a reference here to it being towards a man it and he was or became hard, firm, rigid, stiff, tough, strong, robust, sturdy and hardy. Well we can see some of the euphemisms there for the male member but let's actually look a little bit further. So here we are on page uh, 1712 of Lane's lexicon again dealing with the same route as before and we see again the similar meanings repeated. This is actually the uh, very close to the form we're looking for, sulbun. Um, hard, firm, rigid, stiff, tough and strong in fact exactly the same meanings with this particular word and let's go specifically to the area that we're looking for and the meanings um, that are available for that so here we have an example of the word backbone and this is what it says about it the backbone i.e. the bone extended from the qahil or the base of the neck to the let's try and find the other end of this to the ajb or the rump bone the bone upon which the neck is set extending to the root of the tail in a beast and in a man to the osos or the coccyx um, it goes on to say uh, the portion of a back, any portion of the back containing vertebra and this is the important thing to note here and particularly the lumbar portion, the loin. So this, this confirms Hansware's description of Sulb as the loins and this actually says that this word specifically refers to that region as well.